Hi, I'm Dr. Craig Eskuday, President of Intellectability. Welcome to Medical Monday. Today, we're going to talk about preventable causes of suffering and death in people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. There's, there's a term you may have heard called the fatal five. And we use this term to talk about five, really six uh, conditions of um, that, that people with intellectual and developmental disabilities experience at a higher rate than other people. And that can lead to significant complications, including death. And the thing about these is that they're often pre preventable. So we're going to talk about what they are today. I'm just going to give you a little introduction. And then in the next few segments, we will talk about each one of these in more detail. So you can find this information in the book Clinical Pearls in IDD Healthcare. And the introduction to the Fatal Five Plus, as we call it, is Clinical Pearl number 19. So what are the Fatal Five conditions? Um, the first one and the thing that we see all too common in people with disabilities is constipation. And it doesn't sound like you want, you wonder how can constipation be fatal? Well, what happens is, is constipation, when it goes unrecognized for long periods of time, it can lead to bowel obstructions and major complications. Um, so that's one of the biggest preventable causes. And we know how to prevent these things. Uh, and we'll talk more about that when we talk about that, when we talk about that in the constipation segment. So the next one, the next big preventable cause of death is aspiration. Aspiration is basically uh, when we get food or fluid down the wrong pipe. You may have done that yourself sometimes. You take a sip of water and it goes the wrong way and you start coughing. Well, that's because that material went down into your lungs. Well, in people with disabilities, many of them have swallowing difficulties, swallowing problems, um, problems with the muscle function that can increase the risk of something like aspiration. Sometimes it's even silent and you can't, you don't even have the, the symptoms of it. And this can lead to pneumonia, which in, which in turn can lead to death. The next big one is seizures. So people with disabilities have a much higher incidence of seizures. About 25% of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities have seizures. And the more significant the level of disability, the more likely you are to have seizures. And these seizure disorders in people with disabilities are often much more complex and much more difficult to treat. And seizures themselves can lead to injuries, accidents, as, as well as death from, from not being able to breathe or having prolonged seizure activity. Another big one is dehydration. Dehydration is essentially entirely preventable. We just need to get enough water but we need to understand uh, the different ways that de dehydration might appear in people with disabilities, when they might be more likely to experience them, how can we recognize them and, the, and what we can do about them. So we'll talk about that in that section as well. Another big one is sepsis. Sepsis is an infection that basically overwhelms your body and overwhelms your body's immune response. And it kind of kicks into overdrive and causes things like fever and shaking chills, but then when it gets more severe, it causes low blood pressure, loss of consciousness, and can lead to death. And it is a very significant cause of death, often unrecognized in people with disabilities and people without disabilities. And then kind of the plus that we talk about is gastroesophageal reflux disease. The common term for that is reflux or heartburn. And you're like, wow, how can that cause death? Well, again, when we reflux things from our stomach, it goes into our throat, and people who are at risk for aspiration can aspirate that back down into their lungs. It can also cause erosions in the esophagus, which can lead to massive bleeding, as well as uh, increase the risk of esophageal cancer. And the thing about it is, is that it, it's so oftenly missed. It's something that we don't recognize that people may be experiencing. And the funny thing is many of these things that we talked about are often expressed behaviorally. So a person might become agitated at certain times and it might not be because they just are upset. 
It could be because they're experiencing pain or some sort of discomfort from one of these conditions. So we've covered the general overview of these topics. Join me in the next few sessions and we will talk about each of these in more detail.